A while back, one of my neighbors gave me this old XL pressure washer. It was acting a little funny when I got it, but basically all I did was remove the spark plug, fill the cylinder with marble mystery oil, let it sit there for a little while, pull the cord a few times with the spark plug out to drain most of the oil, put the plug back in, and it started like nothing was ever wrong. Since then, I've used it for odd jobs here and there, and it's shown up on several videos on this channel. But just recently, when using it, suddenly it lost pressure. The engine was still running, but there was no pressure coming out of the pump. I figured that there were probably seals inside of the pump that were shot, and was hopeful about taking it apart and fixing it. Since the little 5 horsepower Honda engine still runs really well, I would like to save this pressure washer. The first thing we'll need to do is get a look at the pump. It is housed underneath this black plastic cover. We'll start by removing the detergent hose, and then we'll remove the garden hose fitting with the hex key socket, and the pressure hose fitting with an opened end wrench. Then there are just two little sheet metal screws, one on each side of the plastic cover, holding it down. And then the cover simply lifts up off of the pump. So finally, we can take a good look at the pump on this pressure washer. This is a fairly old style of pump called the strap pump because of the steel springs top and bottom. So hopefully we can just take it apart and replace some seals and oh, Well, the ball bearings and chunks of aluminum sitting underneath the pump are not a good sign for its repairability. These ball bearings and bits of cage are part of the main bearing which sits in between the two straps and rides on the eccentric cam, but clearly they're not doing that anymore. In fact, the whole strap mechanism is completely loose and the pistons are broken off in the bores. The outer bearing race is left there just a hula hoop around that main shaft. Clearly everything still turns okay and the engine was still running really well when the pump stopped working. But unfortunately a repair is not going to be practical for this old pump. But luckily these Honda engines are really common and it's easy to find a replacement pump that will fit this engine. So let's get started removing the pump from the engine. First is this dead end piece of hose, which as far as I can tell is called a pulse hose? But we'll slide it out of this grommet underneath the pressure washer and remove it from the pump. It's definitely not necessary to remove it, but since the rest of the pump is trashed, I'd like to at least keep that elbow fitting for future use. The only thing that holds the pump to the engine are these four bolts around the pump flanges perimeter. We'll loosen up all four bolts and then set them aside. Then the pump simply slides away from the crankshaft of the engine. Just for kicks, we'll pull this broken strap assembly off of the pump and have a look at it. A strap pump is a pretty interesting design. Riding off of the crankshaft is an eccentric cam with a counterweight to keep things balanced. The strap assembly would have been attached around that eccentric so that when the center of the straps where the bearing is attached moves around on that eccentric, the pistons are moved back and forth. So this whole strap assembly is this pump's version of a connecting rod. It's a pretty interesting design and a bit of a novel way to get those pistons moving. But it's also a bit of an antiquated design. As far as I can tell, nobody makes them anymore. It's quite possible somebody out there is rebuilding these things, but I don't think any new ones are being made. But, like I mentioned earlier, the Honda engine is pretty much universal. So I got on eBay and ordered this pressure washer pump, for under 60 bucks. The pressure and flow ratings are about the same, maybe a little bit higher than the old pump, but clearly it's a different design. This new pump is what's called an axial pump, and they're made to be pretty much universal. Basically, inside of this pump, there are three spring-loaded pistons. The springs keep the pistons retracted in their bores. The pistons are actuated by a swash plate, which directly connects to the crankshaft. The swash plate is basically a wedge on the end of a cylinder, so as the crankshaft rotates, this wedge pushes the pistons down and lets them back up. This type of pump is the most common one found on consumer level and economy pressure washers. So despite being a very different design, this new pump should bolt up to that old Honda engine. But there's an obvious difference here. The strap pump uses this spline drive sort of thing, while the new one simply fits over a 7 8 inch crankshaft and is driven by a key. But luckily that splined pinion, I guess you would call it, is simply held to the crank by a grub screw. The impact gun easily removes the screw and with a little prying, the pinion is removed. So what we're left with is a 7 8 inch shaft with an open keyway. But the new pump didn't come with a crank key and the old system didn't use one. So, we'll have to improvise. It's always handy to keep some scrap pieces around, even small ones, like this guy. This little piece of steel is an offcut from the steel straps we use to make the seat rail adapters on the Datsun. And it just so happens to be the right thickness, and is already pretty close to the right size. So we'll go ahead and grab the angle grinder and make a key. With the width about right, we'll cut it a little shorter. And now that we have a piece that's pretty close in size to what we're looking for, we'll take it to the disc sander and make it a perfect fit. 
and after a few test fits and a little bit of extra sanding, we have a key that's the perfect size for this setup. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize on both sides of this key to help keep it from rusting. And then we can carefully line things up, make sure the key stays in place, and slide the new pump onto the crankshaft. Then we'll put back in the pump bolts with a little bit of anti-seize on the threads and tighten everything up. Now that the pump is securely attached to the engine, we can sort out the fittings. It came with this male-to-male -male adapter threaded into the pump. In order to reuse the old quick detach connector, we'll have to remove that adapter. It's in there pretty tight, but soon enough the adapter is removed. In order to get this quick detach fitting screwed in there, we're going to have to remove the barb fitting for the detergent hose. Luckily, that comes off nice and easy. We'll make sure we have all the parts for it, because that check ball assembly could come in handy for something in the future. Then we'll make sure the adapter actually screws in to the pump. It screws in easily and gets nice and tight, which is interesting because it's not actually the correct thread. That male-to-male -male adapter had an o-ring on it, which usually indicates it's not pipe thread. And it isn't. The threads are straight. This must be a 16 millimeter thread pattern. This quick detach fitting is 3 8 inch NPT, but obviously the two are pretty close. To try to help everything connect as well as possible, we're just going to go ahead and tap those threads in the pump to give them an NPT taper. Changing metric to standard like that isn't really the best thing to do, but I think it'll still be secure enough. So we'll clean up the threads on that fitting, and then install an 8th inch NPT pipe plug in place of the barb fitting. With that plug tight, we'll put some thread sealer on this connector and screw it into the pump. Since the thread engagement feels pretty good and it installs to a good depth, I think these mismatched threads will do just fine. And after a few more turns of the wrench, that connector is wedged in there nice and tight. And one last little thing, we'll hook up the detergent hose to the new pump. That old hose fits really loosely on this barb fitting, but by cutting the very end of it off, we can get a good fit on the barb. And just for good measure, we'll use a zip tie as a hose clamp. From what I read online, this unit is pre-oiled and ready to go out of the box. The minuscule instruction manual I found said this little yellow plug is supposed to be removed from the oil vent cap, but I'm not so sure I want to leave that open, so we'll leave it in at least for now. So it seems like it's time to test the pressure washer. We'll pull out the garden hose and attach it to the pump, and then we'll lock in the hose for the sprayer. And of course, hook the other end of the hose to the handle of the sprayer. Then we'll open the water faucet and make sure everything is flowing freely. The water is flowing out just as it should, so we'll go ahead and start up the engine. It starts pretty easily, and thankfully, nothing immediately explodes. And a few test trigger pulls indicate the gun is definitely working. So for our test subject, we're going to use this vinyl siding. It's uh, pretty unhappy right now. All the damp weather has not been kind. But at least it makes a perfect test subject for the new pump. This pump definitely feels like it puts out more pressure than the clapped out old one, but even so, the sprayer still has to get pretty close to the wall to remove this moss. But the pressure seems really good and everything seems to be doing its job. We'll go ahead and clean up this portion of the wall and make sure everything keeps working. Just a few minutes later and it doesn't even look like the same wall. So far, this cheap pump has worked very well and I'm glad to have this old pressure washer working again. Well, except for when, about 10 minutes later, that ancient hose sprung a leak. Luckily I didn't get hurt by it, but it definitely tells you to trust your instincts when putting almost 3000 PSI through this old, abused hose. But that's no problem. I already have a new hose for the pressure washer and it continues to work great. It doesn't really seem to matter what it is, whether it's a car or a tool, there's definitely something special about repairing something instead of just throwing it away. Hopefully this shows that even if you can't get the original parts for something that's broken, sometimes it's worth it to just make things work. 